Hi everyone, welcome to our 10th and final video in our series on the 10 most commonly missed concepts on the MCAT. Today's topic is pressures and boiling point. If you would like to see the content related to this video or the nine other most commonly missed concepts, you can head over to mcatselfprep.com, the home of the free MCAT prep course. My name is Ellery Schlingman, one of the tutors at MCAT Self Prep, and I'll be walking you through today's topic. Let's get right into it. First and foremost, we want to answer the question, what is boiling point? And there's kind of two different ways to think about boiling point. One is that is the temperature at which a liquid turns to a gas. More specifically, it is the temperature at which the vapor pressure of a liquid equals the atmospheric pressure causing its state to change from a liquid to a gas. So we're going to get a little bit more into that as we dive into some of the pressures that I just mentioned. In order to dive into them, we're going to think about these pressures acting upon a single bubble that's forming within a liquid. So first, we're going to think about atmospheric, also known as ambient pressure. And this is the pressure that is pushing down on the liquid. And it is going to cause the liquid molecules to squeeze together and is going to prevent bubbles from forming in the liquid. Because of this, we can think about atmospheric pressure. If it increases, so will the boiling point. So if we have more pressure on the liquid, we are going to need to input more energy in order to boil that liquid and cause bubbles to form. In tandem with this, we also have surface tension, which is the fact that liquid molecules have intermolecular forces holding them together. So they're kind of are sticky. And this sticky pressure opposes bubble formation because the liquid wants to keep touching and hanging out with liquid molecules. If surface tension increases, similar to atmospheric pressure, the boiling point is also going to increase for a similar reason, right? If we have more pressure favoring the liquid state, then it is going to be harder and we are going to have to input more energy to boil that particular liquid. The pressure that opposes these two forces is vapor pressure and it is generated by gas molecules crashing into one another and on a surface. So like I just mentioned, it opposes the other two forces, atmospheric pressure and surface tension. And here, kind of opposite because it's going the opposite direction, if vapor pressure increases, boiling point is actually going to decrease. So we're going to need to input less energy in order to cause the liquid to boil. One way that AAMC loves to test us on pressures and boiling point is to think about vacuum distillation. And the purpose of vacuum distillation is to separate compounds based on their boiling points. And you can see we have a vacuum distillation set up here on the left for you. We have our distillation flask that goes up and then goes into the condensing tube and then into the receiving flask. The way that a vacuum distillation works is that we essentially use a vacuum to reduce the atmospheric pressure in the distillation flask to zero, and that in turn decreases the boiling points of both of our compounds. And we can think about this going back to the last slide, right? If we decrease atmospheric pressure, we decrease the pressure pushing down on that liquid, it is going to reduce the amount of energy that we need in order to boil that liquid, therefore reducing the boiling point. Some things to think about um, when you are faced with a vacuum distillation passage or anything like that sort is if there is a leak, how is that going to affect the situation? And why might a vacuum distillation setup include a boiling chip, which is also called an ebullator? I'm going to pause for a moment and let you think about that before I give you the answers. Awesome. So a leak, right? If we somehow break the vacuum in our distillation apparatus, we are going to cause the boiling points of both compounds to increase because we are essentially increasing the atmospheric pressure above zero when we break that vacuum. And that's going to be, a, be applied to both compounds because both compounds are within the distillation flask or in a part of this apparatus. And the reason why someone might use a boiling chip is to simply prevent superheating. Awesome. If you um, are on YouTube with us, this is where I leave you. If you are interested in seeing the rest of this video or in checking out the other videos related to the nine 
um, other most commonly missed concepts as well as lenses and mirrors. I highly recommend that you check them out on mcatselfprep.com. But if not, um, I wish you very well with your day and I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.